What's up guys? Welcome to Ghana New Photography. My name is Don Alabi. Today I'll take you through a full beauty retouch tutorial from start to finish in Photoshop. We will start with importing images into Capture One, raw processing in Capture One, then export from Capture One to Photoshop where we will do frequency separation, global dodge and burn in Photoshop. I'll be using my frequency separation and global dodge and burn actions, which I intend sharing with you guys sometime soon. Looking at all that we have to cover, this video may be the longest I have recorded, but I'll do my best to keep it as short as possible. I'll add timestamps so you can skip to specific chapters, though I recommend you watch the full video so you don't miss any details, especially if you're a beginner. This image you're seeing here is our final image. This is what we intend to achieve by the end of this tutorial. Let me disable the layers one by one so you see how the image came into Photoshop. So this is our raw image from Capture One to Photoshop. And after going through the various processes, this is our final image. So let's delete this image and start from Capture One. Over here in Capture One, we would have to import our image so we can raw process it. So let's go up here to Import. Then we select where we want to import our image from. So these are our raw images and we need a specific one. So let's disable this. This is the image we want. So we select it and then select where we want it to go to. Okay, our parameters are correct. So we select import and voila, our image is in here. So we'll go ahead, crop, do some basic raw processing and then we export it to Photoshop. I like cropping my beauty images in Capture One before retouching in Photoshop. So let's use the crop tool, then select four by five. Then once we tap here, it crops it. So we can adjust the crop to the size we want. So something like this. Think it's okay press enter and this is what we have so let's um let's go here and as you can see everything is flat so the white balance i like it because i chose the specific value in camera so let's go to this then increase it a bit here keep it somewhere here um 40 should do okay let's do 50. and then we go to levels i start with auto and then i work my way up from there so let's brighten it up the mid tones a bit um close this place up and uh, I think my image is looking good. I would like to go to curves, into Luma curve, and then do a slight S curve. Let's check it before and after. So this is after, this is before, after, before. So you see the improvement we made to the image before and after. If we are happy with this result, we can export it to Photoshop and start with our retouching. So let's export this to Photoshop. Right click on the image here, then we come to edit with Photoshop. With the format, you can choose PSD or TIFF or JPEG. I prefer working in TIFF, uncompressed. Everything here seems to be untouched. Then we go to edit variants. Now that brings our image straight into Photoshop so we can continue with retouching. As usual, the first thing I do in here is blemish remover. So I'll create an empty layer, name it blemish remover. And on this layer, I use the spot healing brush to take off blemishes. So I zoom in as much as possible, sometimes 50%, sometimes 100%, depending on the size of the image. So we can see some blemishes 
on her face, this strand of hair here, and all these things. So we'll take them out and continue. Blemish removal is done, so we move to the next thing which is frequency separation. Let's open our actions panel and play my frequency separation action. Over here, the radius you choose for your median depends on a couple of factors. So I'll choose 10 for this image. So we open up this group, select our color layer, and I always start by disabling my texture layer so I know I'm working only on color. Anytime you play my action, it selects the mixer brush tool and then gives you these default values which I use. Feel free to change them to whatever values work for you. You need to practice and find which of them work for you. Let's go ahead and start brushing with our mixer brush. One trick with the mixer brush tool is you size it according to the size of the area you're brushing. So don't use just one size like this and brush over the whole image. You won't get the desired result. So always vary the size of the brush. The shortcut key for that is the bracket open and close. So it's, this is open, this is close. So if you have to brush somewhere here, you change the size according to the size of the area. Moreover, I use a Wacom tablet and I've set the brush to pen pressure. So even with me reducing or increasing the sizes, I still control it using the pen pressure. So if I press harder on the pen, it gives me the full size. Or if I press lightly, even though this circle is that big, I still get just a portion of it to be active. You should consider getting an editing tablet if you don't have one yet. I use the Wacom and it's very good so you can get one. So we've used the mixer brush on this image. So what we can do is disable and then enable. Disable, enable. I would like to refine this a bit. So let's go back to that. So let's zoom in and see if we need to do extra blemish removal. So yes, there is something here that I would want to take off. So we go to the texture layer, select the clone stamp tool. I use a flow of 10%. So we sample somewhere here and brush over this thing to take care of it. So we just go over the face and see where we need to do more blemish removal. So just sample the clean area and then brush over wherever the blemish is. You don't want to take out everything, otherwise your image will be too smooth. Just take out what you think it's a blemish to you. Alright, that's fine. Don't forget to save your work as you move on. So if we are okay with this, we'll move to the next thing, which is Global Dodge and Burn. We'll play it for my actions, which is here. And we have our Dodge and Burn group here. So let's select our brush with a low flow. I prefer using 2%, that way I have more room to brush so that I don't end up ruining the image. When you're brushing, you know, you get carried away easily. So I prefer using a low flow. I used a hard light for this shoot. So already the highlights are standing out, but we want to make them stronger a bit. So let's go here and then brush over this highlight, then somewhere here. 
just like with the mixer brush you control the size of your brush so that you don't end up using the same size all over the image you won't get the desired result so all the places where we have the highlights I'm just brushing over to make them stand out a bit more that's all depending on the kind of light you use you may have to do an intensive dodge and burn or just a light one like what I'm doing because the light is already harsh so I'm just doing something very light so let's disable our dodge and burn so far this is before and this is now so it is just something light that we did now let's work with the burn which is the darker areas the shadows so we come here and brush don't forget your brush should be increased or decreased your brush size should be increased or decreased according to the area you're brushing so let's disable our dodge and burn this is before this is after before and after so let's save so once we are done with our dodge and burn we may want to zoom in a bit and then take a critical look at some of the areas now I see over here there is a dark spot here so I would use dodge and burn to work on it so I just go use dodge come over here and then brush over so this is more like macro dodge and burn so with just that we've been able to take away that dark blemish aside that I think everything on her skin is okay let's take a look at a critical thing most people use a different approach for frequency separation some also use higher values which are not realistic now if you look at this image we haven't sharpened it but at 50% look at the texture everything is there we haven't taken away the skin texture we only worked on the tones because of the values we chose you see the details are there let me zoom in to 100% and you see the details are there we haven't sharpened this image guys every detail is there everything there is sharp this is how you want to work you don't want to finish working on an image and you, don't, you have to add other enhancements to make it look good no you want your workflow to be non-destructive so with this we can choose not to sharpen it and the image is already looking good now with her eyes she has clean eyes if i say clean eyes her, eye, her eyeballs are white so we may not need to do much work on it I will, we don't even have to brighten her eyes but i'll just want to tone down these veins a bit so i'll use frequency separation for that let me use the color layer choose my mixer brush and then just brush over the eyes a bit i'll do a full tutorial on how to remove blemishes using frequency separation so watch out for that if you haven't subscribed yet kindly do so and hit the bell to be notified anytime i drop a new video so just like that we have worked on her eyes frequency separation is very powerful you can use it for a whole lot of stuff for product photography even architecture so now let's select the texture with my clone stamp and then try taking off just a bit not everything it's more like toning them down not removing them totally like this and we come here and do the same thing okay and I see somewhere here too we have some rough 
things to take care of. So with that, we zoom out how the image is going to look like when posted, perhaps on Instagram or on your website, or even on your portfolio at various sizes. So with this, I think we are happy with the image. Now I would want to give you a bonus by applying my dark skin action. So let's close all these and then come here. This is the dark skin action run it and this is what we have it looks nice yummy but i would want to change the opacity to something lower so as we change it this is what we are getting um i like somewhere around 20. yes this is 20 percent so let's disable it this is before this is after so as usual we save it if you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to share it with somebody you know will benefit from it. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for watching.